Once you find it, we can start testing. Just like old times. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at 10 Switch ports we never thought would happen. There are tons of titles that have been ported to Nintendo's portable home console hybrid, but these were the ones we never thought would land on the Switch, whether it was because of technical fidelity or company reputations. Which Switch port surprised you the most? Share with us in the comments below. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Dark Souls Remastered The Dark Souls games have mostly been synonymous with PC gaming. Cue the PC Master Race plebs, yeah I see you in the comments. Sure, the games have also been enjoyable on console, but if you wanted the definitive experience or some goofy mod installed, well then PC was the way to go. So we'd never thought we would even see a remaster of the first Dark Souls ever make its way to Switch. To commemorate the historical moment even more, an amiibo of Solera of Astora was announced so we could always praise the sun alongside our favorite knight. Needless to say, this was a pretty big deal as it opened up Dark Souls to a whole new audience. Doom With every game they develop, id Software does their damn hardest to push technology to its absolute limits. From graphical fidelity to AI, it's hard to imagine something like 2016's Doom on anything less than a high-end PC, or even a PS4. And yet, those tech wizards at id found a way. While the port isn't as impressive as other versions, having a locked 30 frames per second and textures not being as detailed, the atmosphere and environments overall still look astounding. Does it go against the presentation and performance id normally strives for? Eh, maybe, but slaying demons on the go is all we wanted, and we got it! Assassin's Creed The Ezio Collection Do you know what brings us here tonight? On Enough of your nonsense, Krulo! The Ezio Collection is a massive package for players. With three games and two movies rolled into one, this is absolutely a collection worth owning. Whereas some might say seeing old games like the ones featured in Ezio Collection isn't shocking, we understand. These are old games from the late 2000s and early 2010s. However, it's not the technical prowess that gets it on here. We're more impressed with how it's all packed into such a tiny cartridge. Even if these are Xbox 360, PS3 era games, they are still massive in size. Many ports and collections sell only download codes or expect players to access the game through cloud services. So, this is more impressive than one might think. We work in the dark. To serve the light. We are assassins. Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. And she will fulfill her vow. Whatever the cost. While Hellblade was made before developer Ninja Theory was bought by Xbox in 2018, it was roughly a year after the fact when the game landed on Switch. One would expect Microsoft would want to restrict one of their newly acquired IPs from being on platforms not owned by them. And yet, Hellblade somehow made its way to the Switch in 2019. Even with brightened visuals and weaker shadowing, the game still looks surprisingly good on Switch, despite the compromises. So even if this was the only way you could experience Hellblade, it's not a bad deal. Cruisin' Blast Publisher Raw Thrills has primarily focused on the revived arcade scene over the last decade, supplying chains like Dave & Buster's with the latest cabinets from various developers. With such resounding success, it's almost a shock that they didn't start publishing home console games until last year with Cruisin' Blast. Does the game look better than the arcade version? Not really, but few ports have since arcade cabinets have their own dedicated tech to work with. Still, it's just as fun to play, and it drives home the utter insanity you'll encounter across the explosive and chaotic tracks. No Man's Sky 
Over the last several years, No Man's Sky has grown to be a massive live service game regardless of its troubles at initial launch. Base building has been expanded upon, there are more ways to discover and explore planets, and it's amassed millions of players. Between its visual fidelity and sheer scope, we didn't think something of this scale could ever really exist on the Switch. And yet, it was announced during a Nintendo Direct in February 2022. Its mere existence has us impressed. We only hope it's not going to be one of those physical copies hiding a download code instead of a cartridge. Star Wars The Force Unleashed I will not fail you, master. After a troublesome decade being an exclusive IP under EA, Star Wars has been seeing a major comeback in the video game space. While newer titles like Jedi Fallen Order and Squadrons have restored our faith in the franchise, at least in the gaming scene, we've also seen a handful of old Star Wars games getting remastered and ported to modern consoles. One could see The Force Unleashed coming a mile away, it was bound to happen eventually, but the shocking part of it is that it's not exactly a straight up remaster like the other old games. Actually, it's a port of the Wii version, and the port itself has not been announced for any other platform at the time of this video. Honestly, we were expecting the PlayStation and Xbox versions to be announced as well by this point. Maybe Nintendo has some kind of exclusivity deal on this? Portal Companion Collection Oh, it's you. It's been a long time. Valve hasn't really held a presence in console gaming since the orange box brought Half-Life, Team Fortress 2, and Portal to Xbox 360 and PS3 in 2007. Left 4 Dead and CSGO kind of closed that chapter in the early 2010s as the company shifted focus to their own gaming platform, Steam. Here we are roughly a decade later since the last console game Valve released, and they're bringing Portal to the Switch. With the Companion Collection, players can experience both the original Portal and its sequel on the go, all for a reasonable cost of 20 USD. Well, 1999, but, you know, estimate up. While you will be able to play this on the Steam Deck, Valve's own Switch-like system, it's cool to see them cater to another community outside of their own and introduce Portal to a whole new generation of players. The important thing is you are back. With me. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Have you ever played The Witcher 3? It's massive. And not just massive, like, you're not going to have a life nor buy another game for an entire year massive. That's how massive we're talking about. This game has been famous and infamous for the hundreds of hours packed in between exploring its expansive world and completing its seemingly countless side quests. And through some unholy rituals at CD Projekt and Nintendo, it all manages to fit into a tiny cartridge and run on the Nintendo Switch. Is it going to drain your battery when playing on the go? Yeah, probably. But before 2019, there was no reason for us to believe the Switch could handle a game of this size. Warframe. You want to talk about games with crazy impressive visuals? Well, Warframe seems like a bit of a stretch. Admittedly, yes, the game doesn't look super great in terms of resolution, and the frame rate has been sacrificed and lowered to 30 frames per second, or 24 in densely packed areas. However, this huge free-to-play title offers up settings similar to that of a normal PC, and even with certain settings turned off, the game still holds up visually well and plays great. It may not be the preferable way to experience Warframe, but one must recognize this as a technical feat regardless. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.